she took the law into her own hands. Anna Payne tracked down Kenneth Herring after a car crash in 2019. What happened next is now being debated in court. Atlanta News first reporter Brittany Ford is live tonight outside the Clayton County Courthouse. And Brittany, you heard the full extent of those 911 calls here today. Well, very yeah, and they were hard to hear, invoking a lot of emotion from some of the witnesses that took the stand today. Those 911 calls and witness testimony painting a picture for the jury of what happened that day. I never did nothing. Nine one one calls reveal the dramatic moments. Twenty four year old Hannah Payne witnessed a car wreck in May of twenty nineteen near the Atlanta airport. <laughs> that now has her standing trial for murder. Emotions were high in the courtroom Thursday. As prosecutors called witnesses to the stand. When she got out, she was immediately aggressive. I, I didn't understand what was going on. I thought it was like road rage at the time. Maybe stare at him because um, I kept saying to myself, I hope she don't shoot him. And when I heard the gunshot, he looked at me. And I looked at him and he just had this look on his face. Payne is accused of shooting and killing 62-year-old Kenneth Herring after a struggle that occurred when he allegedly tried to leave the scene of a crash. Payne's attorney says his client was acting in self-defense, going on to claim the gun went off during that struggle. She had the mouse dick. There's been ongoing speculation that Herrings may have been under the influence. The 62-year-old's family and attorney claim he was having a diabetic episode and was on the way to the hospital when the crash happened. Now, Payne's attorney says there is a possibility that she could take the stand sometime this week. The trial is set to resume back here tomorrow morning. We'll seek to shed light on what happened the night a Clayton County man was killed. I'm not, I'm not, I'm sorry, I'm here to tell you, I'm not, not going to follow you. Um, because he is going to follow the accident. So I don't think I'm going to go after the Lock his ass up. Lock his ass up. You're going to jail. You're going to jail. Yeah, I actually compare her to Dana Elmore. Y'all know the cop that was so excited about arresting Micah and putting all those fake charges on him? Oh, yeah. That's what I'm feeling with her. For some reason, she felt entitled and totally puts me in the mind of a Karen. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We are headed to Atlanta, Georgia, Clayton County. What happened is there was an accident. The guy's name is Kenneth Herring. The female that you're looking at, who reminds me of a Karen, her name is Hannah Payne, 25 years old. This was just in, in trial. The court proceedings just ended like three days ago. Right. We're going to talk about everything that led up to this incident. Her and a, a semi truck was turning. This uh, uh, Kenneth Herring ran a red light. OK, and he hit this tractor trailer. She was not even involved in the accident at all, but she decided to chase him down in her vehicle, block him off and stop him. Now, mind you, there was an accident probably a couple miles away. I don't know how far they drove from the um, the accident. But like I said, this guy, he had stopped at a point. There was another guy at the scene who identified himself as a officer. We later find out he's a corrections officer. He's on the phone with 911. And he's tell he's saying, did, we did you get the tag? We need to get his tag. So then she decides she's going to jump in a vehicle and go chase the man down, allegedly, for his tag. But tell me, why did she end up out of her vehicle yelling in this man's face, telling him to get the F out the car, MF? Like she's a freaking cop. The 911 operator is telling her, you know, they asked her, did you get his tag? And she's like, oh, I think he about to leave. So she chases him. She like, we don't want you to chase him, man. We want you to stay safe. This woman takes the law into her own hands and take this man's life. In County, Atlanta, Georgia. So, yeah. So what she was charged with, count one, malicious unaliving. Count two, felony unaliving. Count three, aggravated assault, assault. Count four, felony unaliving. Count five, false imprisonment. Count six, possession of a firearm during the commission of a felony. Count seven, possession of a, possession of a firearm during the commission of a felony. Count eight, 
possession of a firearm during the commission of a felony. Nobody tell the story like these videos that I'm about to play. We gonna get into it. I wanna know what y'all think about what y'all seeing. Let me pull up a few pictures. So yeah, I'm gonna show y'all her the position of the vehicles. Now, mind you, his family says that he was on his way to the hospital. He was having a diet causes him to be disoriented and all of this kind of stuff. The initial guy that spoke with him could tell that something was off with him. This female accuses the man of being drunk. Now, per toxicology reports, he wasn't drunk. He didn't have no alcohol, no drugs in his system. Also, they couldn't tell if he was having a diabetic coma or not. So that that they couldn't tell that. Now, let's say this is what she says. She's telling the 911 operator that he grabbed, he pulled the trigger. I'm talking about when I tell y'all she was on the phone with 911 when this happened. And she sat up there and made up a lie so dang on quick, it'll make your head spin. And then she want to go to court and cry like it's going to change something. No, nah, you going to man up today. You going to man up today. Because when I tell y'all, she didn't give a damn. And it was clear. Lock his ass up. Lock his ass up. You're going to jail. You're going to jail. Lock his ass up. Lock his ass up. You're going to jail. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She definitely gone. Okay. This was her when the first cop arrived at the, on the scene. He said, who? who him? You know what I'm saying? She like, I did. And hand them the, her weapon. You see she's on the phone. You can see her face. She did not give a damn that she had just took a life. She only cared because she's in trouble. She was so entitled, y'all. She was so entitled that she didn't think she did anything wrong. She was in the interrogation room biting her nails and putting them in her pocket. She even picked up the shell casing off the ground. Who does that? They said it was another shell casing that didn't even can't come all the way out, but the, the bullet inside of it, I guess it did. Girl, men, look, I'm acting like I'm just talking to one person. What in the... What in the fuckity fuck, 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 fuckity fuck, 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 this is another one of those, y'all. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Let me play this video. On top of the gun, twisted it back towards her, and the gun went off. She immediately picked up the phone and said, Oh my God, he just shot himself with my pistol. Number. Trying to intercede since the subject left the scene. She cut in front of his vehicle, forcing him to stop. An altercation then ensued between the two of them, and during the altercation, Mr. Herring was shot and killed. She's using deadly force, Judge. She wasn't faced with deadly force. He has nothing. And then she shoots him. We'll seek to shed light on what happened the night a Clayton County man was killed. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm not, not going to follow you. Um, Investigators say Hannah Payne tracked down Kenneth Herring after a car crash in 2019. What happened next is now being debated in court. Atlanta News First reporter Brittany Ford is live tonight outside the Clayton County Courthouse. And Brittany, you heard the full extent of those 911 calls here today. Well, very yeah, and they were hard to hear, invoking a lot of emotion from some of the witnesses that took the stand today. Those 911 calls and witness testimony painting a picture for the jury of what happened that day. 911 calls reveal the dramatic moments. Twenty-four-year-old Hannah Payne witnessed a car wreck in May of 2019 near the Atlanta airport. <laughs> that now has her standing trial for murder. Emotions were high in the courtroom Thursday as prosecutors called witnesses to the stand. When she got out, she was immediately aggressive. I, I didn't understand what was going on. I thought it was like road rage at the time. It made me stare at him because um, I kept saying to myself, I hope she knows she's going to hurt the gun. He looked at me 
and I'm looking up and he just has a look on his face. Payne is accused of showing 62-year-old Kenneth Herring after a struggle that occurred when he allegedly tried to leave the scene of a crash. Payne's attorney says his client was acting in self-defense, going on to claim the gun went off during that struggle. She had no mouth, did she? There's been ongoing speculation that Herrings may have been under the influence. The 62-year-old's family and attorney claim he was having a diabetic episode and was on the way to the hospital when the crash happened. Now, Payne's attorney says there is a possibility that she could take the stand sometime this week. The trial is set to resume back here tomorrow morning. Yeah, she actually did take the stand and she lied up there on the stand. Talking about both of their fingers was inside of the trigger thing. First of all, ma'am. How did you come from your car talking to 911 on the phone to his door? Talking about get the F out, mf -er. Get the F out. Who are you? And that's what he wanted to know. You ain't in no uniform. You, you ain't identified yourself to be a, a law enforcement. So who the hell are you to chase me down and say any dang on thing? And the story that she gives is just freaking ridiculous. Oh, he was grabbing on her and he pulled her into the car and his hand got on top of her hand and then his finger is in there with his finger. But she says she never put her finger on it. Well, when they did the swabs for DNA, they said that her the the her DNA was on there with a, a high number with 24 zeros behind it. More people than we have in the world. That's how dominant her hand was on the weapon. They said they seen another uh, male that what well, they seen a male. What well, they said hers was the female. That was very dominant. 24 zeros behind the number. There was a male DNA, all two male DNAs on it, but it was blended. They couldn't tell. And it was so little that they couldn't make it out. So she lied and they proved it. But then, of course, they try to say uh, her lawyer try to say that they didn't prove, um, you know, they didn't prove that his hand wasn't on the weapon or whatever. Well, if they if they can put 24 zeros behind the positivity that it was her hand dominating it, I'm going to go with it was her hand. She should have never put a weapon. This man didn't have a weapon. OK, so they charge her with false imprisonment. You see how her tire is? So when she was on 911, she was caught. She was talking and, and chasing him to get him to stop. She pulled in front of him and turned her. She turned her wheel to get in front of him. And when she was on 911, she talking about he hit my car. Um, ma'am, ma'am, come on now, come on. And this was her demeanor right after it. And she had on a different shirt. She changed her shirt. Oh, her. When she described him, she said her lip was busted and her eye was black. Girl, get out of here. I didn't see nothing. And then even the uh, one of the detectives in the interrogation room asked her, did those come from your sweatshirt when you took them off? That's how light it was, okay? Get the hell out of here, Karen. And then the other thing, when the cop got on the scene, now we already know, th this is her. She's in the middle of traffic. She's, you know, just in the middle, just standing there. I'm, I'm thinking somewhere maybe near her car, not far from the scene. She hands him his weapon and say that I was the one that, that took this guy out. She ain't getting no handcuffs. Not right then and there. She should have been detained immediately. Okay? But she wasn't. I wonder why. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let me play this, uh, play another video.
pickup truck, I think it's a Dakota, and a semi was involved. And the red Dakota ran the red light and slammed into the side of the semi. It doesn't look like we received any reports on it yet. Okay, okay yeah. Putting a call here. Okay. Red Dakota, and um, were they on Forest Parkway or on Clark Howell? Um, the semi and I were turning left onto Forest Parkway. And the Dakota was going west on to on Fort Parkway. Oh, okay. And what's your name? My name is Hannah. It's a N N A H. Last name is Payne. T A Y N E. And what's your callback number? Uh, four seven zero five one two one eight four seven. We appreciate you calling this in. We'll get someone out there and try to assist them. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Now I want to look at the emergency. Yes, ma'am. I'm on Clark Howell and Forest Parkway, the intersection. Um, I actually called about 20 minutes ago for an accident, and no one has shown up yet. Um, but I am under the impression that the guy that caused the accident, who ran the red light, is drunk. And he's gotten back in his car, and he's looking like he's trying to drive away. Okay, can you get his tag number? <laughs> Hold on. Oh, he's driving away. Um... It's a red dot Dakota. Mm -hmm. One second, hold on. He's flooding. He's flooding. Okay, so y'all heard him when he said, okay, go, go, go. He or go or whatever. He talk he's talking to her. But she was already about it. She was already in her car. So she ran off to get the tag. And we gonna hear in these 911 calls. The tag, they already had the dang on tag. The 911 operator shouldn't have told her to get the tag either. Well, she asked her, did she get the tag? And she was like, I'm gonna get it now or something but um so yeah but don't they think that somebody would have took that tag after he driving so he his radiator was busted i'm talking about the front end of his car was jacked up they it was so bad that they was like not even knowing how this guy was able to continue to drive that is his vehicle behind hers obviously and as you can see she wasn't involved in the car accident at all mind your business karen you know what I'm saying? She didn't have nothing to do with it. She just had a weapon and she felt about it. If she didn't have that weapon on her, she would have never did this. I know she wouldn't. Now, she says she got the weapon. She hadn't had it that long. She got it because of her job. She would show people properties in different areas and dealing with a lot of different people. So she used got it for her safety. And she had a holster that was inside of her pants, so it's it not visible to other people. But she just wanted to use the weapon. That's that's my opinion. I guarantee you she wouldn't have chased that man down if she did not have it. You know she wouldn't have. But for whatever reason, I guess in her mind, she was totally right. She didn't feel like she did nothing wrong. And like she's thinking she got the side, you know, the 911 operator is on the phone. This other guy is an officer, which she basically trying to say that, you know, like, the uh, first of all, use your common sense. 
if he was a, a cop, he should he would have been the one to get in the car and chase the guy down. You know what I'm saying? A cop wouldn't tell a civilian to go go get nothing from a freaking cr criminal. Alleged cr case is absolutely insane. And so y'all seen that the guy, I don't know why the guy fled. I, I don't know what he was thinking. I don't know if he really was having a diabetic shocker or whatever they call it. Um, I don't know if he really was on his way to the emergency room and all that. I just know this man didn't have a weapon. He got into an accident and he decided to flee. That is not a death sentence, but for Hannah, it was. And she gave it to him and had no remorse in doing it. Like I said, she was chilling in the, in the interrogation room, biting off her fingernails. Like, why would she even do that? Like, that's See, they hadn't done any checking of her hands. They hadn't collected any swabs or nothing. And she in there biting off fingernails. She on the scene picking up casings. Like, what? Don't they mark that kind of stuff? So, yeah. So, anyway. Notice how she put the narrative on the guy that he was drunk. Like, she's a professional. You know, like, I mean, she wasn't close enough to smell his breath. Well, maybe she was not went after this call like she wasn't close to him to be able to say that he was On drunk 911 call if you notice that he when the guy called he said it had been 20 minutes she said it had been 20 minutes when she called back it took them a minute to get to the scene you know it took a very long time to get to the scene i know she was like this this could have all been prevented yeah if you wouldn't have brought a gun you know what I'm saying? She didn't want to introduce the gun. It did not have to be at all. And then the lie she tell behind it is just like insane. Georgia Tag license plate is R H A as an Apple four eight five nine. Right now, I'm going to play a little bit of her clip. I mean, a little bit of her why she's on the See, stand. That's another thing that she was saying that he grabbed on her shirt. He ripped her shirt. He scratched her on her neck, bust her lip, her her eye, and man, nothing. I seen nothing of the sort. Like, I mean, not not nothing serious. She claimed that he drug her in, dragged her into the car. Witnesses said they never seen his hand come out the um out the car or anything. She she claimed this man said, I got something for you, and all of this stuff. Uh, yeah, calling her names and all this. I don't, I don't believe nothing she said. But what he's doing is opening the evidence bag that has the weapon in it, and she's about to explain. By the way, the shirt that y that she has on at the scene is not the shirt she had on. She changed into the sweatshirt. So she did a lot of stuff wrong. You know what I'm saying? Like changing her shirt, uh, biting off her nails and picking up the shell casing on the scene like who does that the cop arrived never put her in handcuffs nothing just she chilling is that what caused the bruising or the that is okay and you said he's trying to push it this way and probably hold on again yes okay where were those i had marks on the back of my neck and kind of scratches along my arms, bruisings um, on my wrist, and scratches along my chest. Okay. Anything in the facial area? Yes. Um, I had a kind of a black eye, but a bruised eye and a busted um, upper lip. Did y'all hear her? She said she had a black eye and a bruised, busted upper lip. Now, I, I, man, she, <laughs> I actually did some screenshots. Which, let me see if I put it on this phone. Because I, I got to let y'all see this. It's, it's so ridiculous, okay? The lies that she just told there is just absolutely insane. Man, what? <laughs> like, she exaggerated. She made that up. All of it. And she was all up on this man car. She was not in fear for her life or nothing of the sort. Because they had pointed out some dirt that was on her pants from his vehicle. But yeah, I'm about to throw it. I see nothing. I mean, it looked a little red. But it, yeah. They measuring it like it's really something. Y'all let me know what y'all see. And then the busted lip. She, she said busted lip and then she tried to change it fast, right? 
But you already said it. You're lying. You exaggerated. It looked like she got a blistered lip. Not busted, though. Definitely looked like a water or uh, something on her lip, top of her lip. Some type of discoloration. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, see, I, I even got a picture of her picking up the shell casing on the scene. It was uh, people out there recording that actually um, heard, heard it and actually seen some of it on their recording. Okay, so again, this is her at the scene, handed over her weapon. She was never handcuffed or anything on the scene. This is her right at his vehicle after she popped him, picking up the shell casing. Y'all, this is what she originally had on on the scene. She's holding it together because it was open, right? So, I mean, honestly, if you was in a car accident and somebody running over to you screaming in your face, talking about get the F out the car, MF, and got a weapon in their hand, I mean, you might try to do something, too, to stop them or grab their hand to try to stop them from hitting you with it. She claimed that he was turning it towards her and all of this, her her wrist was swollen and all this was going on. And this is the busted lip she talking about. Do y'all, it, it looked like a warded lip maybe, but not busted. What do y'all think? Do y'all see any blood, any busted, any swelling? It looked more, you know what I'm saying? Come on, playgirl. A mad exaggeration. And then this is the black eye. Do anybody see a black eye here? I mean, I'm just confused. If that man would have hit her, you would have seen every line in his finger, his fist on her damn face. So that was a lie. And they found her guilty of every last one of those charges that they had for her. OK, I don't know when she goes in for sentencing, but as they should, they found her guilty. OK, and she cried like a baby. Shoot, I'd have been crying too, but I'm just saying this was her a lot through court, but it had nothing to do with remorse, feeling bad that you took somebody life because the immediate the immediate face was not looking like that. She was fine. She was on the phone. She was talking. She felt like she was she did the right thing. She did not give a damn. Let's hear a little bit more. Just a little bit more. And other I guess like sore spots like her bruising and redness around the edges of my face. Mm -hmm. And all of this occurred while he was dragging you uh, forward towards your vehicle? Correct. He was dragging her forward towards her vehicle. Let me pull her, put her lying face back up here. Hold on. This busted face we talking about. And you said he was making a statement to you of I've got something for you, bitch. Was there any other statements made that you can remember this time? No, he just kept telling me that kind of over and over again and that I was nobody. No. Well, so he's saying all that, you ain't nobody and I got something for you and all this. That It happened so fast, y'all. I don't even believe a conversation happened. After she was yelling MF and all of this stuff and I got a weapon and I will shoot, that's what she did. What's he doing in the vehicle while this is all going on? Before, but before he punched the gas is when he was kind of turning his body and he was reaching, like reaching behind him. Did you see what he was reaching for? I, no, I did not. Did you see any of the contents of the inside of his vehicle? During, no. Okay. I could see that there were things everywhere, but other than that, he I didn't He was really hit in the abdomen. It hit his small intestines, large intestines, and his liver. Did you liver. experience anything like that prior to this incident? No. Okay. And then what happened then? Um, well, after the reaching is when he mashed the gas. And when he mashed the gas, I, like I said, have no understanding of how far we went, how much farther we can go. At that point, I didn't know that it, we had stopped because we hit my vehicle. Um, and... That's when I uh, drew my weapon. Wait, now you said mashing the gas. What did that sound like? Uh, you could hear the, the truck just revving and hissing from like the um, liquids spewing and it was, it was loud. That pulling it out, he would let me go and I'd pull away from the vehicle and that would be it. 
Did you ever stop trying to pull away from the vehicle? No. And explain to me how you uh, pulled your gun out uh, at that time. Um, it was in my holster on my right hip, and he had a hold of me, and I just I, I pulled it out and immediately started trying to just continue to push against the door with it, like pushing away from him. Okay. And as you're pushing away from the door, what happens then? Um, he grabbed my hand with a gun in it. Okay, let me, let me talk. Which arm did you pull or which hand did you pull the gun with? It was my right hand. Okay. And you said he grabbed your wrist. Which wrist? He grabbed my right wrist. All right. And how did he have that wrist? Um, well, with one of his hands, he actually grabbed my wrist to pull it towards him. Could you tell which hand or arm he had grabbed your wrist with? Um, it was his left okay. because he had a hold of it. He had released me with this hand from my neck to grab me with this hand. Okay. And the gun that was outside the door that you're pushing away from, he got a hold of that, correct? Correct. And what happened then? Um, after he originally grabbed it and was kind of pulling at it back and forth is um, when he put his other hand on top and he started trying to actually yank it away from me. Um, and then he started to try to turn it, to pry it almost, like he was trying to pry it out of my, my hand so that he could take it away. And... Which angle was he trying to pry it out of your hand? Um, like a, away from me. So it was this way. Okay. And that obviously is not the way your wrist is supposed to move, correct? Correct. Is, is that what caused the bruising or the... It is. Okay. And you said he's trying to push it this way and pry it out of your hand? To me, it's what it felt like. Like he was trying to pry it out of my hand. And you said another hand came over and grabbed it? Yes. Okay. From the top. And I'm gonna let all I'm gonna let this play because this is part of the part that they said that they did not um prove. But I feel like they did if they said it. her hand was dominant on the gun and it was 24 zeros behind it, and that's more than that's more a number with 24 zeros behind it. That's more people. A number with 24 zeros behind it. That's more people than we got in the dang on world. So uh, yeah, that would be her only DNA that was on that weapon. How was he? How did he have your wrist like this? This hand was here. Yes. Okay. And the gun was here pulling you forward. Yes. And you said he had you here on this? He was closer. All right. So, and he had your shoulder with this hand, or what was this hand? But that he let go. Okay. Once he got a hold of this wrist. So he came. And he grabbed it. All right, he grabbed it like this. Correct. Okay. And where was your finger? The same way that I have it now. And when he grabbed like this, that shows his fingers are right there over the trigger. Correct. Is that a correct? I mean, so, yes. But... So it's possible any of the four digits got into that trigger. Correct. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Uh, yeah whatever she lied okay so now I'm gonna go to the part on the scene this is when the cop arrived on scene Where?
chaos. And y'all see how the cop didn't even think about handcuffing her. He just grabbed it and kept on going. Nothing. Wasn't that odd? I thought so.